everyone welcome to the class. Today we will start a new topic which uh, includes circular obstacle and after that we will talk about zone plates. Now moving ahead with what we started in the last class. In the last class we talked about vibration curve and thereafter circular aperture was discussed. The pattern due to the circular aperture came out to be circular because of the circular symmetry of the aperture and we saw that there is a concentric ring formation and all this analysis were done graphically using vibrational curve. Now what will happen if we replace this circular aperture with a circular disc or circular obstacle. Okay. Now recall that unobstructed wave yields a disturbance which is equal to mod of E1 by 2. Okay, if we have a point source which is emitting a spherical wave friend and this is point of observation P, then due to this point source at a point of observation P, we receive a field which is equal to mod of E1 by 2, where E1 is the contribution from the first Fresnel zone. Now, if some sort of obstacle precisely cover the first Fresnel zone, then what will happen? Suppose this is our first Fresnel zone. Now, if we cover it with some obstacle, okay, a disk is there which is covering exactly the first Fresnel zone, then what would uh, be the uh, disturbance at point of observation P. Okay. Now, since the obstacle is exactly covering the first Fresnel zone, then the contribution from the first Fresnel zone therefore would be deducted. Okay. Now, what is the contribution from the first Fresnel zone? Obviously, it is E1. Therefore, we will subtract E1 from mod of E1 by 2, which is uh, the contribution due to overall Fresnel zones. And if you perform this, if you subtract E1 from E1 by 2, then we will get mod of E1 by 2 with a minus sign. Okay. Although there is a change in the resultant disturbance in terms of sign, but irradiance at the point of observation P would be unaffected. Okay. Then effectively what is happening is that initially we have a point source and a point of observation P and then we are observing some intensity distribution and point of observation P here due to this unobstructed point source. Now we are putting an obstacle in between, still the intensity is the same, it is counterintuitive here yeah? and it is therefore possible that at some point P. Okay, P is movable point and we are picking that particular position of P at which the obstacle is covering first Fresnel zone exactly. Okay. Therefore, at some point P on the axis, the irradiance will be unaltered by the insertion of that obstruction or insertion of this particular disc. Okay. This spot is called Poisson spot. Okay was Poisson who first proposed uh, this problem, who first observed such a behavior in case of uh, this circular obstacle. Okay, this is why it is called Poisson's spot. Now let us see what will happen with the insertion of circular disc. Now this is our wave front which is divided in different Fresnel zone. Okay. The first Fresnel zone is obstructed. Okay and this is our uh, point of observation P. Now then we get a Poisson spot on the axis. Now if the size of disc is a bit bigger, then it will cover more number of Fresnel zone. And now let us assume that the uh, opaque obstacle or disc is covering first L zones. This the size of this disc is such that the first L zones are not visible, first L zones are not contributing at the point of observation P. Since first L zones are covered, then rest of zones will now contribute, only rest of uh, zones will now contribute at point of observation P. What are the rest of the zones? Zones is starting from counting L plus 1 till M, which is the last zone, okay, which is here which is uh, in circulating point uh, O prime, covering point O prime. Okay, therefore, we will now um, calculate the total disturbance 
at point P due to all this rest of the zone. Okay, in this rest of the zone, the first zone would be E L plus one. Yeah, because till E th everything is covered. The second open zone would be E L plus two, and so on and so forth. Now we know that the adjacent zones are out of phase. Therefore, we are putting minus sign here. Okay. Now, unlike the analysis for circular aperture, where we assume that the only initial uh, uh, or lower order zones are contributing and higher orders are not contributing, here higher orders are contributing while lower orders are not contributing. With this, since the higher orders are contributing and we know that for last zone k theta approaches to 0 because here theta is equal to pi degree you see this angle this is 180 pi degree okay therefore last zone does not contribute okay the contribution from em now approaches approaches to 0 therefore okay then we will repeat the previous procedure of ev evaluating the series what we did before okay and with uh, that we get the resultant disturbance at point of observation p almost equal to mod of e l plus 1 by 2 when there was no obstacle the resultant disturbance at p was mod of e 1 by 2 when l is covered then the first uncovered Fresnel zone now from equation number 36 you see it is now behaving like first zone okay what i mean to say is that when there was no obstruction no obstacle the field was mod of e1 by 2 when now if lth if till lth zones are covered we are getting similar expression pro with only change that e1 is replaced by el plus 1 okay el plus 1 is the first unobscured zone first exposed zone okay and if there is not a great difference between el plus 1 and e1 then this resultant distribution would again be almost equal to this e which is equal to mod of e1 square by 2 okay this is what is written here the irradiance on the central axis is generally only slightly less than that of the unobstructed wave okay because all the Fresnel zone are of equal area, they are almost equally contributing to the resultant disturbance at point of observation P. Therefore, there is a little bit difference if you, uh, there would be only little bit of difference if you cover a portion of the, this is spherical wave front with some obstacle. Okay. The second point which is very important, there is a bright spot everywhere along the central axis except immediately behind the circular obstacle okay contrary to the case of circular aperture okay in case of circular aperture uh, when we moved along the axis we saw maxima and minima but here since only few initial Fresnel zones are uh, covered while rest are open we will see bright spot everywhere along the central axis but just behind the obstacle we will see a darkness why now this is a part of the spherical wave front and these are the Fresnel zone let us draw the axis here this is our point of observation p and see suppose that this is the obstacle now say this is the direction of wave vector k Okay. Now, if this is the direction of wave vector k, from here we can measure the angles uh, theta for the point of observation p. Yeah. If p is here, the angle is theta here. If p is say here, then this angle will increase. If p is here, then this angle would be even larger. Now, you see that as you move p or the point of observation close to the obstacle, the theta increases. Okay. And we know that as theta increases, k decreases, the obliquity factor decreases. Okay. This is wave vector k and this is obliquity factor k. Yeah, do not get confused. Now, obliquity factor, now it goes down with increase in theta. And this is why if we, if you are very close to the obstacle, there would not be any intensity because theta is very big, okay, almost equal to 90 and therefore, 
no uh, field would be there, no, no intensity would be there. If you are exactly behind the circular obstacle, zero intensity, zero irradiance. Now, the wavelets propagating beyond the disk circumference meet in phase on the central axis. The first part, this part, this part correspond to uh, this point also. Okay, the wavelets propagating beyond disk circumference meet in phase on the central axis. Okay, whatever wavelets are uh, propagating here, from here and from here, they would of course be in phase. Now, notice that as p moves close to the disk, theta increases and therefore, k l plus 1 tends to 0 and the irradiance gradually falls off to 0. This is what is explained here. Okay. That is this. I tried to quickly cover these points, but they, these are very much clear. We have already discussed too much on vibration curve. Now, the next topic in today's lecture is Fresnel zone plate. Now, in our previous consideration, we utilized the fact that successive Fresnel zone tended to nullify each other. If you remember this uh, uh, spherical wave front, and there we assumed that the first nullifies two and 2 nullifies 3 because they are uh, out of phase by 180 degree. Okay. Now, this suggests that we will observe a tremendous increase in irradiance at point of observation p if we remove either all even or all odd zones. What it says is that, let us suppose this is the front view of zone, this is your first zone, this is your second zone, this is again your third zone. Then from this figure, you see that first, third, fifth and odd zones are in phase, while second, fourth, sixth and even all these even zones are also in phase. But these odd and even numbers, they are out of phase. Then if we somehow cover either odd number of zone or even number of zone, then the total irradiance at the point of observation p, it should increase tremendously, it should heavily increase. Okay? Now, therefore, people devised such a screen and a screen that alters the light either in amplitude or phase coming from every other half period zone is called zone plate. Okay? A plate that covers either even number of half period zone or odd number of half period zone is called zone plate. Now, let us analyze it. Suppose this dashed vertical dashed line represent one of such zone plate, a point source S is here which is at a distance rho naught from the zone plate and a point of observation P is here on the other side of the uh, zone plate which is at a distance r naught. Okay? This distance is r naught. Now, we will uh, calculate the radii of uh, zone using this figure. Now, say A m is the outer edge of the mth region. Okay? Now, a wave that travels this path S, A, m and p must arrive out of phase by m lambda by 2 with a wave that travels this straight line path. Okay? because this is because of the property of this point a m, because the path length difference would be m lambda by 2, half integral multiple of uh, the wavelength. With this, let us look on the geometry, let us look on the figure and from figure we can derive this relation here, rho m plus r m minus rho naught plus r naught. Since this s a m p is a longer distance and this path s a m p is larger than by s o p by m lambda by 2. Therefore, the difference between these two paths must be equal to m lambda by 2. With this, from the figure, we can also calculate the expression for rho m and r m, where r m is, uh, RM is the, uh, the distance between point a m and o. Since r m is uh, small and rho naught is very large, we will uh, resort to binomial expression and therefore, the equation number 30 and, and 39 reduces respectively to equation number 40 and 41. Now, let us substitute equation number 40 and 41 back to equation number 37. Okay? With this substitution, we get this expression. 
ok. Now, suppose in instead of point source the zone plate is being illuminated by plane wave ok. For plane wave rho would be tending to infinity and therefore, this equation reduce, reduces to this equation R m square is equal to m r naught lambda ok and this tells the radius of the zone plate and this tells that if we want to block the mth zone then the radius would be equal to a square root of this radius would be square root of m r naught sorry r naught into lambda ok. Now, equation number 42 has a form identical to that of a thin lens equation it is 1 by u plus 1 by v is equal to 1 by f this is the resemblance this resemble with that relation ok and which is not a coincidence because s is actually imaged in converging diffracted light at p here this zone plate is actually imaging point source s to the point p therefore this zone plate is actually working as a lens a lens which is transmitting at a certain part and it is opaque at certain parts now with this lens let us study now the, the property of the lens let us with this equivalence what we see is that the focal length of this um, lens would be equal to r m square by m lambda which is coming from this relation f is equal to r m square by m lambda this would be the focal length of this lens which is uh, constructed by this zone plate ok and point s and p are said to be conjugate Fauci because they will represent the focal point of the lens left and right focal point of this lens ok. Now, if we launch a collimated beam of light then what will happen is that all these beams will get imaged to the point p ok. The image distance is the primary or first order focal length ok which in turn correspond to a principal maximum in the irradiance distribution ok because whenever the light focuses maxima get created there therefore, we call it a principal maximum of the irradiance distribution and this is clearly depicted in this figure this vertical lines represent a plane wave which is illuminating this zone plate and a part of the light after passing through this zone plate get focused at this point which is point of observation p and this distance is called f1 the focal length ok and this get focuses because due to the property of uh, the the zone plate the plane wave get converted to a uh, spherical wave the uh, the wave front cur curvature is uh, modified here now it's, you see that it's a uh, uh, the curvature is modified in such a way that with propagation it converges to point of observation p but alongside this wave front also produces a different curvature which is shown here with this line ok this is a opposite curvature now if you extend this back then you see that it appears that these wave fronts are coming from a point source situated situated at this point and this point is also at a distance f1 from the half from this zone plate ok this is called virtual image and this is called real image ok. Now, at a distance of f 1 from this zone plates this zone plate uh, plane is uh, designated by capital sigma. Now, at a distance f 1 from uh, this zone plate each ring of the plate is filled by exactly one half period zone on the wave front ok. Now, if you look on the zone plate from point p then you see that 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 each ring on the plate is filled by exactly one half uh, one half period zone and which is what how the zone plates uh, is defined here in this uh, slide ok. It says that a screen that alters the light either in amplitude or phase coming from every other half period zone ok. The alternate zones are now modified ok and this happens only if we are at a point p or 
at the point where the virtual image is being formed. Okay, if we are at a f1 distance, then only there is a correct obscuring of uh, the alternate uh, zones. Now, now if we move the point of observation or the sensor along SP, it means along this line. Okay, this is S, which is source. Now, if we move it along SP towards the plane of the zone plate, then we see that there are several maxima and minima appears. Okay, if we move along the axis, we see several maxima and minima, and therefore the detector or the our uh, sensor it registers a series of very small irradiance maxima and minima until it arrives at a point which is f1 by 3 from the zone plate okay and at that third order focal point f1 by 3 is called third order focal point at that third order focal, focal point there would be a pronounced irradiance peak the maxima value there would be the highest it means that since there are several maxima therefore it corresponds to several focal points okay and therefore additional focal points will exist at f1 by 5 f1 by 7 and so forth so on and so forth it means this fresnel zones or this fresnel zone plate although it seems that they are behaving like a lens but they are not behaving like a usual lens because they exhibit several maxima and minima or several focal length and they are not behaving like a simply opaque disc. But if you want to construct a lens using this half uh, Fresnel half zones, then most of the time people use metallic strips okay? they have some, and these metallic strips has to be somehow suspended in air. Now, with this metallic strip and, and with this metric metallic strip, you can image radiations starting from x ray to visible to gamma and radio. Okay. Therefore, the bandwidth over which this modified lens work is much larger or much wider than visual spectrum uh, lenses. And this is all for today. Thank you for joining me. See you in the next class.